our dearly beloved Ghanaians. We wish all of you a blessed New Year 2024. From all indications and deducing from the uninspiring 2024 budget statement and economic policy prepared by Dr. Mahmoudou Baumia and Ken Ufurata, we are convinced 2024 will be a difficult year, filled with economic hardships. This is because the MPP government has once again, in their final year, piled more taxes on businesses and Ghanaians. Having pushed 850,000 Ghanaians into the poverty bracket in 2022 alone due to the mismanagement of the economy and uncontrolled corruption, one would have expected the government to have given suffering Ghanaians some reprieve, at least in its final year. Unfortunately, there is no joy because Ghanaians are suffering. The economy is bankrupt and Ghana has defaulted on its debt obligations. Prices of commodities have skyrocketed. The cocoa sector has virtually collapsed. And pensioners have been tortured with some sent to their early graves through the crude and painful financial haircuts meted out to many families. Ladies and gentlemen, on one hand, even though 2024 will be a difficult year, filled with economic hardship because of the mismanagement of economy, on the other hand, 2024 also brings hope. Hope because the non-performing government is on its way out of office. Again, 2024 brings hope because on December 7th, you will have the singular opportunity to vote for the experienced and visionary flag bearer of the NDC, John Dramani Mahama, as the next president of the Republic of Ghana. He is the man who handed over to this government the following. Three active produ oil producing and revenue generating fields. He took over only one from President um, Atamils at that time. And at the time of handing over, there were three active oil producing and revenue generating fields. Robust streams of revenue, including the energy sector levy. Strong economic buffers, including sinking fund and stabilization fund. Strong economic growth pools. We handed over the Ghana Infrastructure Investment Fund and an impressive credit and economic rating of a B plus. Sadly, on January 7, 2025, the incompetent government of Nana Kufuado 
and Baumia will be handing over an economy on the verge of collapse to Mahama. We know Mahama will fix it. I urge you to vote massively and convincingly from John Dramani Mahama because he's the man with the vision, the experience, the empathy to restore Ghana's economy to good health and to create well-paying jobs for all, Ghanaians including the youth. Creating opportunities for all is one of the key reasons we are determined to win this election in order to implement the 24-hour economic policy. Ladies and gentlemen, every evidence and indicator shows the NDC will win the 2024 elections. Beyond the polls published by pollsters, our series of internal research consistently points to a one-third victory for John Dramani Mahama with a convincing working majority in parliament. <laughs> However, we are not complacent because polls alone do not confer victory on the political party in elections. Moreover, it's been said that those who vote decide nothing. But those who count the votes decide everything. We are conscious of the fact that our opponent who control the state machinery do not believe in fairness at all. That is why we are assuring Ghanaians that we will not rest. We will not tire. And we will not falter. We will not relent until every vote is cast, every vote is counted, and every vote is made to count by the Jim Mensah-led Electoral Commission. We will not rest until we ensure every single Ghanaian is protected. The dastardly murder of eight Ghanaians to make Akufuado president in 2020 must not be repeated in 2024. The blood of the murdered eight shall remain a stain on the Akufuado Baumia's second term record forever. Instead of President Akufuado demanding congratulations from President John Dramani Mahama, as we are picking from the media, we suggest that he must listen to his predecessor when he says he's the only person who has a predecessor who will become his successor. When President Mahama says, the use of tax and rogue elements within the security agencies to disrupt elections in some parts of the country as occurred in 2020 elections, leading to the loss of eight lives will forever be remembered as Ghana's day of infamy, unquote. <coughs> Nanado must also take a cue from Mr. Mahama when he adds that it is unconscionable 
That three years after three tragic, after these traffic, tragic events, our president Nana Kufado has not uttered even a word of sympathy to the bereaved families. Ladies and gentlemen, Nana Kufuado should rather be implementing the recommendations of the Commission of Inquiry, which he himself set up, that interrogated the actors and victims of the Ayawasu West War Gone by election violence. And not be worried over congratulations from our flag bearer. We will not congratulate anybody who murders Ghanaians to secure power. We will not. <laughs> Similarly, he must not only be apologizing to the people of Santro Kofi, Akpafu, Likwe, and Lolobi for disenfranchising them in 2020. But also, he must be ensuring their representation in Parliament is restored. Let me assure you, fellow Ghanaians, as we commemorate 31 years of the 1992 Constitution that restored Ghana to democratic governance, that the next NDC government shall deliver justice to all victims of this government's misrule. And we mean it. We shall go after the perpetrators who murdered the eight Ghanaians during the 2020 election. <coughs> Even if they murder more in 2024. We shall find the perpetrators. They can run, but they cannot hide. And we shall punish the perpetrators when we win power on December 7th this year. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, as happens during every election year, we expect our offices to be inundated with invitations to participate in events and activities to promote peaceful elections. While we appreciate the efforts of such religious leaders, traditional authorities, and civil society organizations, NDC believes that the way to solve a problem is to deal with its root causes. We urge them to add their collective voices to our call to state institutions involved in the conduct of the 2024 elections to approach their duties with professionalism, fairness, and honesty. The officials serving in these institutions, i.e. the Security, Judiciary, and the Electoral Commission, must constantly be reminded of their oaths of office, which impose on them onerous responsibilities to secure and protect the interests, and not any other interest, the interests of Mother Ghana. That is what the oath they swore to take the office imposed on them. Nana Kufado must be reminded of his presidential oath and his oath of allegiance on the 7th of January 2017 and the repetition on 2021, which imposed on him specific duties and responsibilities to ensure that Ghana remains peaceful and in one piece. He must be called out 
to abandon his partisan commitment, which he has expressed publicly, that he will do whatever is in his power during the remaining term in office to hand over power to an, independent, to an MPP successor. He wants to choose his successor and not the people of Ghana in whom the sovereignty of Ghana resides. We are saying no way. Ladies and gentlemen, Akufuado is simply undermining the sovereign will of Ghanaians to choose who our president must be. Sovereignty resides with the people, and only the people must bestow the right to lead on politicians, not Akufuado. My dear people in moral society, we in the NDC want to assure you that we in the NDC are victims of MPP's violent crimes. We in the NDC continue, will continue to work for a peaceful Ghana and protect the interests of the masses. But we will not sit on concern for a repeat of the 2020 election related killings. That one we will not countenance it. Because it's been said that the first law of nature is self protection. And we are saying never again. We believe it is unfair to call on the victims to guarantee the peace of the oppressor. We are the victims of violence. And yet when the moral and civil society speaks, they either are engaged in equalization and calling all of us to ensure peaceful elections or telling us in NDC who are the victims to ensure that the oppressor has peace. Never again. Ladies and gentlemen, we believe that those who are planning to come to our offices to invite us to participate in activities geared towards peaceful elections, signing of memoranda, and all that, the time is now. Sure. This is the time to call out the people, the actual perpetrators who will create disruptions to our peace to put in the right structures to ensure there is peace. We don't control the army. We don't control the police. We don't control any arm of the security services. And we don't control the arbiter of the elections with the Electoral Commission. So the moral society must rise up and support us with their collective voices. Now that there is more time for us to correct what is wrong, so that we can have a peaceful 2020 election. They shouldn't wait till October, November, when they know that what has been orchestrated cannot be corrected because of lack of time. 
to now be appealing to us to condone the wrongdoing and to accept what the oppressor is imposing on us. NDC is tired of being the victims of peace. We must all be the beneficiaries of peace, not the victims. So if you are all interested in peace, let everybody play their role to ensure that there will be peaceful elections. But when somebody is holding a knife at our truth, and you say, you keep quiet. The pain will go very soon, you will feel no pain. You are telling us that very soon that we will feel no pain will be after we are dead, we will feel no pain. Tell the oppressor to remove the knife and we all have peace in this country. Ladies and gentlemen, this government knows its uncountable and unconscionable actions and inactions, including corruption, flagrant human rights abuses, and more. Therefore, they are preparing to hang onto power at all costs in order to escape justice. There is no way they can escape justice. They are behaving like people who are riding a tiger. If you get down, the tiger will devour you. If you stay on the back of the tiger, you die of hunger. So they don't know what to do. But we are saying that if you are an MPP government and you haven't done any wrong to the nation or the people of Ghana, you have nothing to fear sure. under an NDC government. But if you have abused the power and mandate entrusted in you, you must account for your actions. And you will account for your actions. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I will tell you, they will fail in their attempt to hold on to power. Yes. And we will take over the election, the, the, the governance of this country, and the nation will remain peaceful. Yeah. They will fail because we believe that no power, no organized enemy, however, no organized army, however powerful it is, can defeat an organized and determined people struggling for their freedom. Truth is, Ghanaians have already abandoned the MPP and their followers. Therefore, the MPP ministers, the wisest thing to do now is to start preparing your handing over notes. Ladies and gentlemen, let's now turn our attention to the immediate past district level elections. Already, thousands of persons affiliated to MPP have lost the district level elections miserably. The elections are non partisan. It is illegal for any political party to seek to sponsor any candidate. But the identity of the candidates and participants are known. And so, we have conducted 
a compilation of persons who contested from our ranks, who contested the district assembly elections. And I can tell you that the voters down there, if they know you to be a person affiliated to MPP, they vote you out. <laughs> yes, the MPP people have miserably lost the district assembly and unit committee elections to members, supporters, and affiliates of the NDC. Sincere political watchers and analysts know this is another evidence when the government is on its way out of office. They know because even though the processes leading to the district level elections are nonpartisan, most of the contestants and the voters are aware of where their candidates stand politically. As an illustration, in Walewale in the Northeast region, which happens to be the constituency of the sitting vice president and the MPP flag bearer, the MP NDC affiliates won the majority of the electoral areas. Our people won 18. Eight, sorry, I beg your pardon. Eight out of the 12 electoral areas. Also, in Abura, Asebu, Kwamankese, AAK, in Central Region, we captured 24 out of 31 electoral areas. <laughs> and in Almighty Hohoi, where the seat is illegally held by the MPP with the connivance of the Electoral Commission, in 2020, NDC had 12 out of 17 seats. In 2020, when they were doing the gerrymandering and thought they were cutting out NDC strong report, they did the gerrymandering leaving only two assembly seats out of the 17. But the people have arisen. They've seen through the manipulation. And today, they have returned 12 out of the 17, from two to 12. We have the attached seat, a sheet for your perusa. And we have the constituency breakdown of results of the district level elections with pie charts. Those MPP leaders who just are found of lying because they are following the tradition and behavior of their flag bearer. <laughs> Just put concocted material in the social media, claiming that they have won 57%. Let them come out with the evidence. We have the evidence now, and we will show it to you. And let them come and challenge it. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Even Ashanti and Eastern region were also very impressive for the NDC compared to the 2019 performance. Presently, 
even though the Electoral Commission unexpectedly pro postponed voting in some electoral areas in these two stronghold regions of the ruling MPP. NDC members and affiliates secured 34%, over 34%, and over 45% of the electoral areas in Ashanti and Eastern region, respectively. <laughs> we have never done that much in Ashanti. We're always hovering below 30, around 25. 22 thereabouts. Today, we have secured over 34 percent in Ashanti region. And in Eastern region, we have secured close to 46 percent. In Anado's home region, that is a referendum on his government. We have already sent hearty congratulations to all the elected assembly members and unit committee members. Moreover, we have assured them through our flag bearer that the next NDC government shall pay allowances to assembly members to enhance their work. Because we believe that Politics is local. We are cutting number of ministers and expenses incurred by the state or ministers, many of whom are hired for doing nothing, and rechanneling the money to the base, the assembly members to help us build stronger communities who will be dealing with the day-to-day -day needs of the people. And we believe that that makes a lot of sense. We deem this intervention necessary because socioeconomic development of a country must permeate all aspects of society including the development of local economies in districts, municipalities, and the metropolises. This is why we urge the government to immediately release outstanding funds due to the metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies to allow the local government functionaries perform their functions as expected. Even when, in the dying moments when Nanado is on, on the cross, <laughs> he can do one thing to secure some clemency by releasing the district assembly, common fund, and all other funds so that they can pray for him after the elections. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Notwithstanding our overwhelming success in the district level elections, there are worrying developments which can have grave consequences for the December 7 presidential and parliamentary elections if not checked immediately. And that is why we are calling on those who believe with us in peace and fair play to direct their attention to so that when we deal with those problems, we will not need to be appealing to people for peace. These include the no indelible ink mantra, the shortage of ballot papers, and then the nature of security during elections. Let me be abundantly clear one more time that the NDC 
is diametrically opposed to the Electoral Commission's decision not to use indelible ink during the election 2024. We are all aware of the many unanswered questions about the integrity of the voters' register. The discontinuation of the use of indelible ink in Ghana's elections at this stage will open the floodgate for nefarious activities that will compromise the integrity of our elections. This problem is exacerbated by the many unanswered questions about the integrity of the voters' register. One wonders how and why the EC arrived at this decision, knowing very well that BDC, BVDs fail. And the reality is that BDCs, that is the biometric verification devices, do fail. There is no technology in the world that can ensure 100% performance of biometric verification devices. So if you are planning with this knowledge, you must know that there must be countermeasures to deal with cases where the BVD fails. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ghanaians, the NDC strongly opposes the removal of indelible ink because it visibly, transparently, and physically verifies voters in addition to biometric verification. Indelible ink marks and identifies voters in order to discourage and prevent them from engaging in multiple voting, particularly when there is a party. Why do away with this multi-layered, tried and tested verification system that adds additional credibility to Ghana's electoral process? Why? Whose interest is being served? Have we, as Ghanaians, said that we will not pay for the indelible ink. <laughs> In the event of a malfunction of the BVD, if a voter attempts to vote twice or more, the surest and quickest way to identify such a criminal is the stain of indelible ink on that person's finger. So instead of civil society, faith-based organizations coming to our office to appeal with us to ensure peace, they should put their efforts on making sure that the indelible ink stays. The EC must not make life easy for criminals to exploit our electoral process. Moreover, without indelible ink, a pliant EC official can allow a voter to vote whether or not the person is on the register at a particular polling station. And truth be told, there may be certain conducts that may be committed by temporary staff of the Electoral Commission. They are not permanent staff of the Electoral Commission, but they are recruited among us. But at times, we will blame the Electoral Commission for what they have done when there is no directive from the center to do so. So it is in the interest of the Electoral Commission and the participating parties that such people must be watched and must be prevented in engaging criminal conduct that will create conflict 
between the Electoral Commission and the participating part, political parties in the elections. Let me reiterate that so long as manual verification is allowed, and so long as the integrity of the voters' register remains questionable, so must indelible ink be applied to voters. <laughs> and we must not forget that in the district level elections, some electoral officers were caught interfering in the voting process. Our friends in the media, are you not the people who reported this to us? <laughs> <laughs> then we come to the issue of shortage of ballot papers. It is equally worrying that ballot paper shortages affected the district level elections across the country with widespread incidents of printing errors in some electoral areas. This led to elections being rescheduled and thereby disenfranchising and inconveniencing some voters. We hope this was not a deliberate attempt at voter suppression. Whatever the reason was, we must work together to avoid any such shortages of electoral material on December 7. 2024. Let us keep in mind, and we shall never let go the fact that some printing houses, the Electoral Commission engaged to print the ballot papers in 2020, were discovered to have printed at least one million extra ballot papers. Some were discovered at the premises of the printing houses. Others were discovered on the field. And the police led the exercise of retrieving those on the field and supervised their destruction. Which other evidence is required for the prosecution of the actors in the printing houses? Mm -hmm. and the people who were fiscally caught doing this. So CSOs, leadership of faith-based organizations, traditional authorities, if a criminal is rewarded, how do you prevent crime? So we still have enough time for the criminals to be identified and dealt with so that it will give assurance to the good citizens to realize that it pays to be a good citizen. And that is the surest way of ensuring that there is peace in this country. And we can reduce the incidence of electoral violence. It is not the other way around. Where criminals who are involved in using violence and thuggery to compromise our elections are rewarded with political positions and appointments. Everybody will want to be a criminal so that they can enjoy the rewards of being a criminal. The criminal case of this wrongful printing of one million extra ballot papers is still in the hands of the police 
for over three years. And to add insults to injuries, the Electoral Commission continues to use the services of such printing firms. What are we encouraging? Criminal conduct. Now we turn our attention to insecurity and intimidation of voters. Insecurity continues to plague our elections. One would have thought that after the killing of eight Ghanaians in 2020, which was preceded by the Ayawasu West Wogon by election mayhem, the MPP government and its members would desist from fomenting violence during elections. But as usual, ladies and gentlemen, you trust MPP at your own peril. For instance, on 19 December 2023, in the Dompim electoral area in Takwa and Swaim, in the district level elections, which are supposed to be non partisan, MPP tax invaded the collation center to disrupt the process just because the MPP aligned aspirant was clearly losing the elections. Likewise, at Abufu Presby Park in Greater Accra, MPP tax fired guns just because an MPP preferred candidate was losing elections. The least said about honorable or dishonorable Afenio Markin's conduct in winning bad district, the better. Absolutely nothing so far has happened to any of these perpetrators. What are we encouraging? Bad conduct and violence in the next election. Ladies and gentlemen, we in NDC will not tolerate a repeat of the 2020 election related violence and murders. This being the case, we urge all security actors to remain professional for the good of our dear country, Ghana. Now I turn my attention to the return to IPAC by the NDC. This is Jean Mensah. Our dear sister <laughs> says they miss NDC's contributions at the Interparty Advisory Committee meetings. Tell her <laughs> that we miss the ideas she espoused while serving at the Institute of Economic Affairs. Sometimes we ask, what has happened to all the pro-democracy ideas the IEA churned out under the leadership of our dear sister? Yes, I would say she's my dear sister because I worked with her for close to 10 years. But I realized that the IE version of Jimensa is different from the Electoral Commission version. <laughs> Our sister Jane should not allow Akufuado and Baumia to destroy the opportunity the 2024 elections presents for her to redeem herself and to salvage 
the little image left of the Electoral Commission of Ghana. Already, there is an uneasy calm brewing among the Electoral Commission workers themselves. The worsening working conditions of EC staff is leading to low morale. But we trust that we can work together for the good of our motherland and build a better Ghana, a better electoral commission for them all as Kenyans. We hope our return to the IPAC will be mutually and nationally beneficial. The National Peace Council has met the Electoral Commission and our good selves in the NDC. We have stated clearly our concerns that needs to be addressed. Hopefully, in the spirit of this new year, the NDC will hear favorably from the National Peace Council to signal our eventual return to the Interparty Advisory Committee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we strongly and unconditionally call for a special program to replace lost voter ID cards in the areas affected by flood in the Volta Basin. This was an avoidable humanitarian crisis occasioned by mismanagement of the dams on the Volta River. The victims have suffered enough of this government's neglect. And we should not make, we should not add insults to injuries by disenfranchising them in the upcoming elections. Additionally, the NDC has discovered serious discrepancies between the final voters register the Electoral Commission issued out to political parties prior to the 2020 elections, based upon which ballot papers were printed and the actual, uh, on the one side, and the actual register used on the day of voting in selected polling stations in certain constituencies. In other words, we all agree that after registration and certifying the register, this is the final register based upon which ballot papers will be printed and we all are misled into observing the printing of ballot papers, only to witness a situation where different voter registers are sent on the voting day to selected polling stations with inflated voter numbers, leading to shortage of ballot papers which are then replenished for the elections to be manipulated. Currently, this revelation is being studied thoroughly across the country. And we want to assure you that our full findings will be made public soon. There are several outstanding issues to be addressed in this election year. The issues include the Electoral Commission's proposed closure of pools at 3 p.m., which the NDC, for the avoidance of doubt, is opposed to. I don't know how to amplify my voice to bring the emphasis home that we are opposed to the closure of votes at 3 p.m. Mm. There are other issues. For instance, ensuring secured printing of quality and accurate ballot papers 
and electoral materials like collation and summary sheets. When collation sheets normally referred in our election as pink sheets are made available to some political parties, the intention is for them to prepare and pre program election results and seek to swap these pre programmed pink sheets with the genuine pink sheets that have been generated as a result of the elections. The solution is to declare the pink sheets security material the same way as ballot papers are, so that we can all track the distribution and movement of pink sheets. And we can all assure ourselves that the pink sheets that will be used in the elections conform to the laws that govern the elections. There's the issue of restoring missing names in the voters' register in our strongholds, including K2 South in the voter region. And the issue of resolving late arrival of electoral material and delayed voting. You see what is being planned. They are bringing the closure of votes to 3 p.m. And yet they are not working on the delivery of electoral materials promptly for elections to start at 3, at 7. So if materials are delivered in selected strongholds of political parties, certain political parties, they will be having three, three hours to vote. Because if they arrive at 12 and the voting is closing at 3, that's a way of cutting off those voters, as opposed to other strongholds where majority of the voters are urban residents. And electoral material can arrive on time. So if anybody tells you that Electoral Commission has nothing to do to facilitate the victory of political parties in elections, they don't know about elections. And we have opened our eyes. We will ensure that these manipulations stop. We have the issue of seeing to transparency in the electoral process throughout to deal with. When there is registration, or there's going to be registration, all political parties verify that the people who are eligible for registration, the number of people is taken from the, uh, what do you call it? Ghana Statistical Service. They have the constitutional mandate to count Ghanaians. It is not the Electoral Commission. So when they tell you that people who are 18 years and above, who are of electoral age, you take it hook, line, and sinker. Your duty, to, is to make sure that such people are registered. You don't generate data and be begin to determine your targets based on guesswork. Then after that, political parties 
should be furnished with ballot printing statistics. If you don't have the statistics for ballot printing, how do you monitor the printing of ballots? We struggled for this in vain. It wasn't provided. And that was what opened the loophole for one million and over ballot papers to be printed and used to manipulate the elections. For now, let's thank you for coming. <laughs> but for emphasis, let me state that the integrity deficit in the voters register and possible breakdown of the BVDs during elections make the use of indelible ink absolutely indispensable. I wish you all Happy New Year and may God bless our home life. Right, thank you very much. And then uh... Ashanti and Eastern Region were also very impressive for the NDC compared to the 2019 performance. Presently, even though the Electoral Commission unexpectedly postponed voting in some electoral areas in these two stronghold regions of the ruling MPP, NDC members and affiliates secured 34%, over 34%, and over 45% of the electoral areas in Ashanti and Eastern Region, respectively. We have never done that much in Ashanti. We're always hovering below 30, around 25, 22, thereabouts. Today, we have secured over 34 percent in Ashanti region. And in Eastern region, we have secured close to 46 percent. In Anado's home region, that is a referendum on his government. Sure. We have already sent Hearty congratulations to all the elected assembly members and unit committee members. Moreover, we have assured them through our flag bearer that the next NDC government shall pay allowances to assembly members to enhance their work. Because we believe that politics is local. We are cutting number of ministers and expenses incurred by the state or ministers, many of whom are hired for doing nothing, and rechanneling the money to the base, the assembly members, to help us build stronger communities who will be dealing with the day-to-day -day needs of the people. And we believe that that makes a lot of sense. We deem this intervention necessary because socioeconomic development of a country must permeate all aspects of society, including the development of local economies in districts, municipalities, and the metropolises. This is why we urge the government to immediately release outstanding funds due to the metropolitan, municipal, and district assemblies to allow the local government functionaries perform their functions as expected. Even when in the dying moments when Anado is on, on the cross, he can do one thing to secure some clemency by 
releasing the district assembly common fund and all other funds so that they can pray for him after the elections. Ladies and gentlemen, notwithstanding our overwhelming success in the district level elections, there are worrying developments which can have grave consequences for the December 7 presidential and parliamentary elections if not checked immediately. And that is why we are calling on those who believe with us in peace and fair play to direct their attention to. So that when we deal with those problems, we will not need to be appealing to people for peace. These include the no indelible ink mantra, the shortage of ballot papers, and then the nature of security during elections. Let me be abundantly clear one more time that the NDC is diametrically opposed to the Electoral Commission's decision not to use indelible ink during the election 2024. <laughs> we are all aware of the many unanswered questions about the integrity of the voters' register. The discontinuation of the use of indelible ink in Ghana's elections at this stage who open the floodgate for nefarious activities that will compromise the integrity of our elections. This problem is exacerbated by the many unanswered questions about the integrity of the voters' register. One wonders how and why the EC arrived at this decision, knowing very well that BDC, BVDs fail. And the reality is that BDCs, that is the biometric verification devices, do fail. There is no technology in the world that can ensure 100% performance of bi uh, biometric verification devices. So if you are planning with this knowledge, you must know that there must be countermeasures to deal with cases where the BVD fails. Ladies and gentlemen, fellow Ghanaians, the NDC strongly opposes the removal of indelible ink because it visibly, transparently, and physically verifies voters in addition to biometric verification. Indelible ink marks and identifies voters in order to discourage and prevent them from engaging in multiple voting, particularly when there is a party. Why do away with this multi-layered, tried and tested verification system that adds additional credibility to Ghana's electoral process? Why? Whose interest is being served? Have we, as Ghanaians, said that we will not pay for the indelible ink. <laughs> In the event of a malfunction of the BVD, if a voter attempts to vote twice or more, the surest and quickest way to identify such a criminal is the stain of indelible ink on that person's finger. So instead of civil society, faith-based organizations coming to our office to appeal with us to ensure peace, they should put their efforts on making sure that 
the indelible ink stays. The EC must not make life easy for criminals to exploit our electoral process. Moreover, without indelible ink, a pliant EC official can allow a voter to vote whether or not the person is on the register at a particular polling station. And truth be told, there may be certain conducts that may be committed by temporary staff of the Electoral Commission. They are not permanent staff of the Electoral Commission, but they are recruited among us. But at times, we will blame the Electoral Commission for what they have done when there is no directive from the center to do so. So it is in the interest of the Electoral Commission and the participating parties that such people must be watched and must be prevented in engaging criminal conduct that will create conflict between the Electoral Commission and the participating part political parties in the elections. Let me reiterate that so long as manual verification is allowed, and so long as the integrity of the voters' register remains questionable, so must indelible ink be applied to voters. <laughs> and we must not forget that in the district level elections, some electoral officers were caught interfering in the voting process. Our friends in the media, are you not the people who reported this to us? <laughs> <laughs> then we come to the issue of shortage of ballot papers. It is equally worrying that ballot paper shortages affected the district level elections across the country with widespread incidents of printing errors in some electoral areas. This led to elections being rescheduled and thereby disenfranchising and inconveniencing some voters. We hope this was not a deliberate attempt at voter suppression. Whatever the reason was, we must work together to avoid any such shortages of electoral material on December 7, 2024. Let us keep in mind, and we shall never let go the fact that some printing houses, the Electoral Commission engaged to print the ballot papers in 2020, were discovered to have printed at least one million extra ballot papers. Some were discovered at the premises of the printing houses. Others were discovered on the field. And the police led the exercise of retrieving those on the field and supervised their destruction. Which other evidence is required for the prosecution of the actors in the printing houses and the people who were fiscally caught doing this. So CSOs, leadership of faith-based organizations, traditional authorities, If a criminal is rewarded, how do you prevent crime? So we still have enough time 
for the criminals to be identified and dealt with so that it will give assurance to the good citizens to realize that it pays to be a good citizen. And that is the surest way of ensuring that there is peace in this country. And we can reduce the incidence of electoral violence. It is not the other way around. Where criminals who are involved in using violence and thuggery to compromise our elections are rewarded with political positions and appointments. Everybody will want to be a criminal so that they can enjoy the rewards of being a criminal. The criminal case of this wrongful printing of one million extra ballot papers is still in the hands of the police for over three years. And to add insult to injuries, the Electoral Commission continues to use the services of such printing firms. What are we encouraging? Criminal conduct. Now we turn our attention to insecurity and intimidation of voters. Insecurity continues to plague our elections. One would have thought that after the killing of eight Ghanaians in 2020, which was preceded by the Ayawaso West Wogan by election mayhem, the MPP government and its members would desist from fomenting violence during elections. But as usual, ladies and gentlemen, you trust MPP at your own peril. For instance, on 19 December 2023, in the Dompim electoral area in Takwan Swaim, in the district level elections, which are supposed to be non partisan, MPP tax invaded the coalition center to disrupt the process just because the MPP aligned aspirant was clearly losing the elections. Likewise, at Abufu Presby Park in Greater Accra, MPP tax fired guns just because an MPP preferred candidate was losing elections. The least said about honorable or dishonorable Afenio Markin's conduct in Winneba District, the better. Absolutely nothing so far has happened to any of these perpetrators. What are we encouraging? Bad conduct and violence in the next election. Ladies and gentlemen, we in NDC will not tolerate a repeat of the 2020 election relate violence and murders. <laughs> this being the case, we urge all security actors to remain professional for the good of our dear country, Ghana. Now I turn my attention to the return to IPAC by the NDC. This is Jean Mensa, our dear sister, says they miss NDC's contributions at the interparty 
advisory committee meetings. Tell her <laughs> that we means the ideas she espoused while serving at the Institute of Economic Affairs. Sometimes we ask, what has happened to all the pro-democracy ideas the IEA churned out under the leadership of our dear sister? Yes, I would say she's my dear sister because I worked with her for close to 10 years. But I realized that the IE version of Jimensa is different from the Electoral Commission version. <laughs> Our sister Jane should not allow Akufuado and Baumia to destroy the opportunity the 2024 elections present for her to redeem herself and to salvage the little image left of the Electoral Commission of Ghana. Already, there is an uneasy calm brewing among the Electoral Commission workers themselves. The worsening working conditions of EC staff is leading to low morale. But we trust that we can work together for the good of our motherland and build a better Ghana, a better electoral commission for them all as Kenyans. We hope our return to the IPAC will be mutually and nationally beneficial. The National Peace Council has met the electoral commission and our good selves in the NDC. We have stated clearly our concerns that needs to be addressed. Hopefully, in the spirit of this new year, the NDC will hear favorably from the National Peace Council to signal our eventual return to the Interparty Advisory Committee. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, we strongly and unconditionally call for a special program to replace lost voter ID cards in the areas affected by flood in the Volta Basin. This was an avoidable humanitarian crisis occasioned by mismanagement of the dams on the Volta River. The victims have suffered enough of this government's neglect. And we should not make, we should not add insults to injuries by disenfranchising them in the upcoming elections. Additionally, the NDC has discovered serious discrepancies between the final voters register the Electoral Commission issued out to political parties prior to the 2020 elections, based upon which ballot papers were printed and the actual, uh, on the one side, and the actual register used on the day of voting in selected polling stations in certain constituencies. <laughs> In other words, we all agree that after registration and certifying the register, this is the final register based upon which ballot papers will be printed, and we all are misled into observing the printing of ballot papers, only to witness a situation where different voter registers are sent on the voting day to selected polling stations with inflated voter numbers. 
leading to shortage of ballot papers, which are then replenished for the elections to be manipulated. Currently, this revelation is being studied thoroughly across the country. And we want to assure you that our full findings will be made public soon. There are several outstanding issues to be addressed in this election year. The issues include the Electoral Commission's proposed closure of polls at 3 p.m., which the NDC, for the avoidance of doubt, is opposed I don't know how to amplify my voice <laughs> to bring the emphasis home that we are opposed to the closure of votes at 3 p.m. Mm -hmm. There are other issues. For instance, ensuring secured printing of quality and accurate ballot papers and electoral materials like collation and summary sheets. When collation sheets normally referred in our election as pink sheets are made available to some political parties, the intention is for them to prepare and pray program election results and seek to swap these pre-programmed pink sheets with the genuine pink sheets that have been generated as a result of the elections. The solution is to declare the pink sheets security material the same way as ballot papers are so that we can all track the distribution and movement of pink sheets. And we can all assure ourselves that the pink sheets that will be used in the elections conform to the laws that govern the elections. There's the issue of restoring missing names in the voters' register in our strongholds, including k 2 SAF in the voter region. And the issue of resolving late arrival of electoral material and delayed voting. You see what is being planned. They are bringing the closure of votes to 3 p.m. And yet they are not working on the delivery of electoral materials promptly for elections to start at 3, at 7. So if materials are delivered in selected strongholds of political parties, certain political parties, they will be having three, three hours to vote. Because if they arrive at 12 and the voting is closing at 3, that's a way of cutting off those voters, as opposed to other strongholds where majority of the voters are urban residents and electoral material can arrive on time. So if anybody tells you that Electoral Commission has nothing to do to facilitate the victory of political parties in elections, they don't know about elections. And we have opened our eyes. We will ensure that these manipulations stop. We have 
the issue of seeing to transparency in the electoral process throughout to deal with. When there is registration, or there's going to be registration, all political parties verify that the people who are eligible for registration, the number of people is taken from the, uh, what do you call it? Ghana Statistical Service. They have the constitutional mandate to count Ghanaians. It is not the Electoral Commission. So when they tell you that people who are 18 years and above, who are of electoral age, you take it hook, line, and sinker. Your duty to, is to make sure that such people are registered. You don't generate data and be begin to detect your targets based on guesswork. Then after that, political parties should be furnished with ballot printing statistics. If you don't have the statistics for ballot printing, how do you monitor the printing of ballots? We struggled for this in vain. It wasn't provided. And that was what opened the loophole for one million and over ballot papers to be printed and used to manipulate the elections. For now, let's thank you for coming. <laughs> but for emphasis, let me state that the integrity deficit in the voters' register and possible breakdown of the BVDs during elections make the use of indelible ink absolutely indispensable. I wish you all Happy New Year and may God bless our homeland.